Hello everyone. Well, I'm going to give y'all an update on the new clutch that now our teenagers going wild. They um as when I get closer, they're gonna they're gonna get quiet all of a sudden. But I just want to show you what's been happening. So let's see. We got two right here. Oh, that, that little one, oops, I first step back, because that is Chino, that is the one that was, um, I scared him already, <clears throat> born with a shut eyes, and I've been really doting over almost too much and feeding them while they were, are starting to beak at seeds, but I see he's, I gotta, I gotta be a brave parent and just let them go and let them get hungry, you know. Because the parents do feed them like every three or four hours. You, you hear a, a whole ruckus of them begging for food and stuff. That's actually what they're doing. Right. One of them is really insistful. The big baby of the bunch. He's always asking for his parents. Notice I made him a male in my mind already. So it's, I believe, one of those two. Let me take a closer look. Yeah, no, it's that one. Okay, that's, there's two dark ones. And he's, there's two that have taken to Chino because Chino is still, I mean, he's, look at how wide open his eyes are now. And I'm so happy about that. But he's still kind of shy, and I think I've, my efforts have backfired a little bit because they didn't want to eat, and I was force-feeding a couple of them that I was worrying were not eating enough. And so now they kind of, um, they kind of uh, try to get away from me when I come with the syringe. Not if I come without the syringe. If I come without the syringe, they totally let me grab them. Um, so that's one of the... The earlier clutch, that one, those two up there, those, this one, and and that one. So those two right there, and that's the mom, that's Kaya. It's a mess. I mean, now it's, it's, you know, three times more work. Uh, the food gets eaten, will start getting eaten um, as soon as they start launching all the way and, and, and not eating all day with uh, using their seeds to to nourish themselves um, the seeds will start going three times faster the cage will start this is a whole the the condominium housing development that I made for them so that they each could find spaces and they wouldn't fight that's Gaia and that's one of the little dark ones that has it's dark on top and has a, a a really white belly that's solitary below gaia in the middle and i don't know what happened i was i got really pissed off because it looks like one of the older sisters started um started defending herself because he was really aggressive and one day i found him missing all the feathers on his on the top of his head and I kind of freaked out poor Salvatore is always going through some kind of trauma and so for a while I put Salvatore and Gaia on the on the um what do you call this I call it the uh the oh Jesus what's that name uh suite the master suite the master bedroom suite with the big nest here um, I found, I found, so this is another big nest that they have there. I found another egg down here. I found an egg today and I immediately removed it. It looked really tiny, but it, I'm sure it was Gaia's. Um, so that's all I'm going to do from now on is I'll constantly be looking for eggs and putting them in the freezer. 
Or just giving them to Kalele. <laughs> Putting them in her food, why not? It's got calcium. Um, and uh, if they're not too old, you know, if they're, if I, if they, I can tell they're old, that cannot be older than uh, a day because I looked yesterday and it wasn't there. So I can just give it to Kalele. But if I, if I discover them after th four or five days, well then, or more, uh, then I'll just put them in the freezer to numb the little chick inside. And afterwards I'll give it to Kalele. Kalele's going to see a vet. I'm worried. So anyways, uh, see how quiet they got? They really like the, the bridge. They like the bridge between the two cages. They like waiting there. Just like Kalele likes to sit in door th thresholds and in the middle of doors everywhere she goes. Um, the bar, waiting at the supermarket. Even in Hawaii, she always used to do that. She wanted to get where the door is <laughs> it's funny and th these little birds do the same thing they like to be right there in between the two cages um i got quiet because they see i'm talking and they wonder why i'm making all these noises let's see who so that's salvatore see how he's missing they instantly all go into mass nap <laughs> just they're making a whole ruckus and then all of a sudden they boop, they all go to sleep um yeah so it's growing back but when i saw him you could see his whole the top of his skull i was so scared this is the biggest one uh and the big baby that uh, kind of has taken to me out of the five is the one that immediately comes to the door when I open the door to feed them. There's two that stay back, you know, in the other cage or whatever, and they don't trust me anymore. I have to grab them and I force feed them. I'm going to stop doing that, though, because I'm not helping them. They, um, they um, recognize the scent of seed because they're, they get the regurgitation from their parents. So... But I worry because he was special. There's two that are really kind of shy and weakly, weaklings, <laughs> and they're always together. I think it's these two right here. No, where's he? Where's okay? There's, there's Chino. You can tell Chino's got really like sparse. A couple of them have big bald spots, and I don't know what that's about. So they have a whole bunch of stuff, space. Anyways, I was saying, they are not using my housing units. <laughs> and I went through so much. Look at that funky 60s curvature happening there. You know? Right there. A little cover so that the poop doesn't go in and they can go in that way. And oop, they don't care. Um, they explore the ones in the middle, especially the one that's bare. They go in to take the hay, but they're not really using them. So I did this other one up here. Gaia is kind of using that one, but they may be a little, a little too constraining for them. I think, you know, they like this one, the, the first one I built because it's open. And they can just sit like sit on a balcony and they go to sleep in there sometimes. But it's really open on top, as you can see. So, oh, okay, here we go. So as long as mom gets close, they're like, okay, 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 I want to eat. I couldn't wait for you to get back. Look, I'm going to start chasing her. <laughs> And she goes crazy, you know, when she's not ready to eat, to feed them, you can always tell which is Gaia because she's got that white all around her neck. Um, there she is. And so they got a bowl of seeds and a reconstituted a bird food, which is like a little grains that they don't have to break the husk off. And that's good for them when they're learning to um, to eat. 
and to break the seeds. Of course, the parents love that too, so they come and eat it. But then they use it to feed them because it's easier to um, eat it right away. And I've seen them do this. They, they, um, when the parent, when the kids start asking for food, the mom goes down and fills herself up with the easy, easy seed, and um, and then is able to feed them right away and not have to wait a little while. I don't know if they wait a little while, but it seems that she prefers that. And uh, that's that right there is that that bowl is the residue of my daily of my daily um, vegetable juice. All the carrots and celery and cucumber and everything, all the stuff that the these centrifuge juicer uh you know puts out in the little um bin i scoop it in there except that stuff will start going bad in after a day so i can only leave it there for a day or two and then i gotta take it out luckily it's cold it's winter so there's no flies otherwise this would be hell <laughs> right now um if it were summer and here also, I, I, I cut some of like the, the fennel. They love the little fennel leaves because they're tiny little, let me see if I can focus that. Fennel has like a, 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 like a duster. It has a little, I don't know how to explain it. Let's see if you can show. Okay, there you can kind of see it there. The fennel leaves are like tiny little, there like a duster and they oh there's one of the sisters and then it's, it's easy to eat and it must be tasty and sweet so they love that and some celery too and oh here's some more there's a little fennel stalk it's not focusing the cage bars won't let me focus okay. so yeah what else the only thing that's missing, well, they got their stones, so it's important. The only thing they're missing is the grit, the granite grit um, sand, which they like to also for um, minerals and sharpening their beak and stuff. And um, look at them, they're all up there now. Um, and the bath, you know, they love to bath, to bathe every every couple of days i mean if they have if they have a bath every single day they won't necessarily bathe every day but at least every couple of days or every three days uh, they will if you don't give them a bath for a while for like over a week as soon as you put the water in they all start going towards it once they recognize it because the little ones at first don't really know how to do that they learn from the parents, obviously. So, is that, which one is that? That's, see how, she tries to feed one and she doesn't want it. Then she goes, now she goes for the ones that are asking. Go girl. She keeps, it's so funny how she chooses who she's gonna feed and the other ones are asking. Um, who knows what's, what their criteria is, but I'm trying to space my feedings, uh, more, there she goes, and the other one, good girl, so what I'm doing now is I'm just basically, maybe once in the afternoon, but at least, um, at midnight before I go to bed, so that they have a, their whole sleeping cycle. None of them go to bed with an empty stomach. But pretty soon I'm just going to stop and let them wing it. I wanted to make sure Chino recuperated because his eyes have come back in almost all the way. And at first he seemed to have some problems like he was behind and he couldn't find he couldn't land on the perch like all his little brothers were 
And I was worried. I thought he, I thought he had some kind of mental retardation or something. But no, he's just like the rest. He's just a little, a little bit shyer and slower. And it just may have to do with being the uh, runt of the litter. I don't know anything about keeping birds. What I do know is this is too small for them. So I don't know. I gotta. I would like to at least something that's three times as larger, where they have a nice stretch to. A fly from one end to another. Um, the part of the reason I did this uh, bridge and not just, I don't know, made two cages, two separate cages, is so that psychologically they can distract their um, their sense of space by organizing, you know, a place to go to for whatever occasion, for whatever reason they prefer. And it actually works. I, I kind of um, hit it on hit it on the mark with that because they do have preferences like when they go to sleep they all go up there to the big nest um, in the morning they start coming down and they wait down there for a little while and then they slowly start coming in and then they're fighting less and the two sisters that were having problems with being young adults now and uh, trying to fight off the dad and then or the dad fighting against one of them. I don't know if one of them is a male, actually, and what the situation is there, because you still can't tell. I was told that one of them was a male, but it doesn't look like it yet. Um, it helps all of that. So, I don't know. I think I'm onto something. I think it's better for them, you know, considering that the, the best possible situation is for them to not be in a cage and to be free uh, considering the circumstances them having um, contained spaces they can choose to go to helps them a lot so yeah I don't know what I'm going to do this summer um, I'm thinking of maybe taking them to the beach <laughs> so Taking to the beach and letting them all go. Um, I don't know yet. They live about uh, four to eight, ten years maybe, or as little as four or five. Um, most average about seven, seven years. Um, but they can they can oscillate. I mean, the life of one of these little birds in captivity can be only three years or it can be maybe 10 years in rare cases so if i just let them live out their lives it could be a long wait <laughs> so i don't know um but uh, it's a lot of work it's a lot of work if you want to make sure that they all live like when they're when they hatch and one of the one of the pet store owners told me why are you doing that why are you hand feeding them and i try to explain to them it's because that way they also are more docile and they come to you uh they know you they don't get all crazy when you get close to the cage uh it helps the parents that the, especially gaia was really afraid of me and now that she sees that i feed the chicks and that the f chicks are not afraid of me she herself has relaxed a great deal and she doesn't bother anymore. She keeps doing whatever she's doing when I approach the cage. Um, and it's also a way of making sure that the runt doesn't get um, euthanized by the parents because sometimes the parents will say, hey, you're too weak, you're too slow, and they let him die. That's nature's way. And uh, since I, that really breaks my heart, I hate to find them dead and stuff and I got myself into a situation and I should have not gone for that second clutch now I got nine little birds in a in a tight space but you know I, I'm learning I guess they're not really unhappy you look you can tell they're happy or not happy I suppose by human standards because they enjoy each other's company and they comfortably go to sleep and nap whenever they want to and or they sing you know it's a different reality it's hard for a lot of us animal lovers um just to you know transport human human assessment of 
comfort and, and happiness to uh, which they have. They're living conscious beings that will always treasure their freedom above anything else, just like any living creature will. And we'll prefer that, and we'll try to escape what we do to them, <laughs> um, whether it's be a slaughterhouse or a, a canary cage. Um, so I, I'm not definitely not uh, advocating the caging of of birds. I wish I I think they shouldn't be commercialized anymore. We shouldn't sell birds as pets. But uh, this uh, parenthesis has to do with with the fact that um, my friend was keeping Salvatore uh, in a dismal situation in the dark in a tiny, tiny little cage. I mean, when I say tiny, I'm talking about, you know, a quarter of this bottom part right here, like that. It was, he couldn't even jump from one stick to another in a dark place and the water was green and I'm like, what are you doing? I don't know, they gave me this bird and was some fair that... She went to the, you know, somebody bought it for her and she just, she's just a really passive set person that complacent person that lets whatever happens to her happen. And I said, no, you can't, you're crazy. You can't have a bird like this. So I took it from her and then I got involved. I didn't want him to be alone. Uh, I figure, well, there's another bird that's caged somewhere. What's the difference? Let's have him keep solitary company and they gave me two instead of one and then that whole drama started where they one ran away one was died or killed i don't know what happened there <laughs> and then i brought gaia and then gaia boom like the next day surprised me with eggs before i could even think about how to manage that and this is how i got and then the second clutch i don't know i guess i i just I got too late. I was there too late, you know, and once you see the eggs, it's almost like seeing a pregnant mom. You kind of go, oh, now I now I don't know what to do. Now I, I should I let them? Should I, you know? And um, I actually, the first, Gaia started laying and I, there were two and I wanted to get rid of them. I threw one in the trash just like that. I didn't think really at all and one i was remorseful because i didn't know if it was uh fertile it had been fertilized if it was you know developing and so i had the morbid curiosity of seeing so and so i uh on in the sink i cracked it open i guess what i was looking for is to reassurance that it wasn't alive that it wasn't and wouldn't you know that there was this tiny little formation of a chick you know that wasn't ready to hatch but there it was and i just felt terrible the whole day i felt like crap and so that's when i said the next time i'm i'm gonna put it in a freezer leave it in the let it freeze for a day and then um and then throw them out right um but that's how i ended up with uh not knowing what to do with this with the second clutch and the next day, there were four, f oh, I couldn't see the nest. That's what the problem was. I couldn't see the nest, and I, I was late. And then like two or three days, I look in, and I see, f I start hearing. <laughs> I didn't see any eggs. I started hearing them chirping. And I go, oh, no, what have I done? Here we go again. And so all five were were born, and I said, well, I can't. I don't want to see any one of them die. So I started feeding them. Well, here they are. Let's see. Are they all there now? That's all four. Those are all four brothers and sisters. All five of them are there. That's the five of them. And Chino, the little runt, is the one off to the right a little bit looking outside. Um, so they seem to be okay. I'm going to try to not feed them anymore and encourage them to take care of themselves. Look at the one in the middle, it's really light colored. She'll probably look like Gaia, it's probably a female too. You can't tell if they're a male yet because for them to, for you to be able to tell that they're a male, look at Salvatore, they have, you have to see that cheek, that colored cheek on the side and the colored, and the colored uh, freckles underneath the wing. 
the cheek and the color freckles and that gives it away that it's definitely a male. Um, one of these two, where Gaia, see Gaia is clearly a female. She doesn't have the color under the wing. The cheek is just the teardrop and that's it. But one of the sisters, look at how cute they are with each other. I call them sisters. I think one may be a male. And um, none of them have freckles under the wings, but one of them has a little bit of blackness. The males can have a black cheek as well as a caramel colored cheek. Seems to have the blackness is spreading onto the cheek. And so there's a chance, but I think there are two females with one has a very fat teardrop and that's it. But here you can't really tell what's going on. Where's the other one? Oh, look, he, came, he went up there to be next to his dad, to his sister. Yeah, they're starting. Yeah, I should, it's good to, um, I don't do it, of course, I'm too uh, involved with the internet, but it's good to just sit and observe them, get to know them and see the relationship between them because they have their favorites and they're kind of mean to some while they're not mean to others. And that gives you a lot of peace of mind because if you know what's going on, you can help the situation in whatever ways you do. And so it, right away I can tell that that sister that just flew down and this little new chickling get along. They like each other. So they're not going to, she's not going to bully. Oh, that was Salvatore. That was the dad, not the sister. Those are the two sisters. They're grooming each other. Uh, Salvatore will not pick on, on that one. You know, there, I, can, I saw that Salvatore already has a few of them that he totally accepts. He's pretty cool with all of them, except one of the sisters has it has it with has it out with one of with one of the dark chicks, and I don't know what that's about. I think it might be a male, and so so they have I don't know. I put I have another dish right there just so that they have sleeping places because I saw that they really like sleeping places. So they have two sleeping places with this one and that one. The tubes, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might remove them. I'm keeping the seeds well stocked and clearing the water every couple of days, making sure that there's no floating poop in them and that they always have fresh water. And that's it. It's like slavery. You've got to be always cleaning the dish. This The dish is about mm, two weeks old. So I'm using hay instead of a grill because first of all these birds are native from the dry grasslands all over Australia and they um, according to the season they'll go down and they'll eat they'll look for seeds on the ground that fall off the grass and so they're they're real um, what's there's a name for it grazers you know they'll go down and be always on the ground looking for seeds and stuff so they like going down on the ground and also the hay is good for lasting for making it last a little longer before it gets too dirty because it this the hay has been dried and treated so the poop slides through the grass blades of the hay to the bottom ones and so immediately on the surface you don't have so much poop lingering um, and there's more air space there's like a cushion a really fat cushion of hay down here so that makes it so that it can dry and so if the poop is really really dry inside the hay it won't create bacteria or smell that much you get to you you get to buy time that way this one, this way, this place also, there's a thick bed of hay down there, and so you can't even tell, you can't even see any poop because it just falls through. It's real liquidy, the poop, right? And it's little turds uh, floating in, in liquidy stuff. So the liquidy stuff drips through. The little turds harden and they fall through. And so it stays clean for a while. Yeah. So anyways, okay, well, that's... <laughs> they're, they're bugging. Oh, that's cute. Let's see, who do we have? That was Salvatore that was in, in line with the chicks. 
What are they doing? See, Salvatore is, um... They know already that they can't fight because I shout at them from my room when I hear one of them um, cry out that he's getting picked on. And so it's really funny. They actually learn to to do things. So now Salvatore continues to pick on one of the little sisters. But instead of being thanks also to the distribution of room space and everything... They're kind of getting it, you know, everyone falls in their place and is more respectful when they are forced to deal with each other. And so Salvatore will just go and, and sort of pick at the beak a little bit. There we go, mom, feed us, mom, feed us. Um, uh, and the other, the little, the other one that used to fight with Salvatore kind of doesn't fight back, and so Salvatore was able to put him or her in her place, and now they're getting along better. I don't know what he's doing. Salvatore's sometimes when they start crying, Salvatore goes crazy and starts looking for food all over the place. And see, Gaia is doing the same thing. She's they're loading up with food because they all started asking for food. So I'm gonna assume that they'll be okay until midnight. Kind of keep an eye on them. You can tell because their neck becomes like an old lady's neck, you know, with the skin stretched, uh, a skinny, a skinny old lady's neck, you know. And all of a sudden, if they if if they get fed. Uh, artificially there that fills up like a balloon like when they're little babies and their parents feed them it it fills up like a balloon all right well okay I better stop this unless a half hour of finches I don't think anybody's gonna watch this whole thing hope you enjoyed it ciao tutti